Okay, we're back. All right, so I should have adjusted the recording area here, so you should be able to see the menu at the top now. Um, for those of you who are wondering, um, the rasterize was under the object menu right here at the top. All right, so um, let's tie what we've just kind of really quickly brushed over um, into something that you can actually use. So I went and found this uh, logo on um, just Google Images, though it clearly belongs to VectorStock. Hope they don't sue me. Uh, it should be fair use though. So um, I've got this right here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Control 2. Um, that is the uh, same as going to Object and Lock Selection. So I can lock this. Now I can click on this, and it's not going to affect this in any way. All right. So if I wanted to copy this logo, for example, what I would do is I would start with the pen tool. Again, I think it's the most powerful tool in this program. Um, and this kind of takes a little bit of practice, so do not expect to get this on your first try. Um, but I'm going to go through here, and I'm probably not even going to get this one on my first try. Um, and I'm just going to I'll figure that one out afterwards. Um, so I'm just going to trace out the outside edges of this area right here. And I'm doing this by clicking with the pen tool. And I'm just going to do that one kind of out of the way so I can manipulate it. And then, so I'm clicking and dragging. And that's adding weight to these lines that I'm working with. Um, and then for this inside shape, which I probably should have gone the other way. Um, actually, let's do that. Let's go the other way. Um, so, click on that point, and then I can click and drag, and that line is kind of hard to see, but I can kind of see it. Um, I'm going to work my way around this shape. I'm not too happy with that one. So I've got that, and then we'll do the other side here. Okay, so that's close enough. Yeah, could use a couple tweaks. Um, probably pull that up a little bit. No. I'm happy with that. All right, so that gives me that shape right there, OK? Um, another option I can do, again, we just talked about layers, is I can click right here to create a new layer. And then I can, um, to actually move things between layers, if you have it selected, there's this little tiny box right here. And you have to drag that up to the other one, all right? So you can see I've got this red outline. This is now on the new layer here. And what I'm going to do is. Is that the same? OK, so um, I don't want to do this. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offset this line. So I'm going to go to Object, Path, Offset Path. And this menu right here just popped up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it to, I'll leave that preview on. And I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. You can also do keyboard, or you can just kind of manually enter a distance. And I'm going to try and guesstimate what that kind of gap was inside of here. So I'm going to do offset path. I think that was about right. Let me do one more. I'll do seven pixels. Hit OK. And so now I actually have two shapes right here. There's that inner and the outer that I just generated with that offset path. All right. So go back to that. And then next I need to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the fill and stroke so I can actually see what I'm working with behind here. And that guesstimate was pretty close. I'm not mad at that. Let's kind of do that little correction. And you can see that this kind of area right here ended somewhere else. So what I'm going to do is, again, pen tool. And then um, it's not giving me the option, so I'm actually going to I'll hit plus on the keyboard, but it's the same option as going to add anchor point. I'm going to add an anchor point there and right there. And 
then I can go in with the minus, same sort of effect, just opposite, um, and delete some of these points right here. All right, so let's see, and then I believe that's that handle right there. Okay, so quickly and easily, I have copied most of this logo together. Um, for this outer side right here, I'm going to select it again, and I'm going to move this fill back so that it's on that side. And then I'm going to do um, eye is the eyedropper, and I'm going to click on, thankfully that has a similar fill, maybe it doesn't. No, I think that has a different fill too. It does, okay. So what we'll do instead, I guess we can cover that too is I'm going to draw a shape right here. And then under here, there's the option for a gradient. And you can also do the little carry key. Um, but I'm going to select that fill, click on gradient. And this tool has improved so much over the years. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gradient menu now that it's got the gradient as the fill there. And I'm going to double click on this dot right here. It's going to come in by default with just this K slider, which is um, in the CMYK scale, K is the black, um, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for this K. Um, we don't want to use this, so I'm actually going to change this to RGB with this little drop down here. Click on the sample tool, and I'm going to click on this area right here. And then same thing, opposite side. I'm going to sample right there. And it looks like there might be a little bit of color difference, maybe not. Is there up here? Yeah, there is up here. I think it's just eyes playing tricks, one of those optical illusion things. Anyway. So, um, all right, I've got the slider here. This has that fill that I want, so I'm going to click. I'm not going to do it. Just click on the stroke um, to make it the highlighted act the active area. I'm going to do none to hide that stroke. And then that should leave the fill right here. And then I'm going to leave this here for now. I'll show you why in a second. And then I'm going to do another gradient area right here. And then same process, switch it over to a gradient. Double click on this and I'll sample this area right here and this area right here. Okay, so I've got both of those. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the eyedropper tool again with this uh, inner one. I'll just click on this one right here. And with this outer one, I'll click on that right there. And let me see how close I was. And there might be a little shift in how dark this gradient is. So I can actually drag these sliders to kind of move this over a little bit. And I'd say that's pretty darn close. I wouldn't be mad at that. All right. Um, so I'm going to pause the camera. I'm going to do the rest of this logo. It's going to be the exact same process, though. Um, or maybe I'll just do like to one of them. I'll do the gray one maybe. Um, but just to kind of go through that process here. So if you want to keep an eye out, just keep an eye out. Um, otherwise, fast forward through this. All right, so for those of you who are still following, again, I'm just going to shift that back. We'll make a guesstimate. Um, and then I'm going to hit D for default, and I'm going to switch back to um, working on this next one. So again, same process. We'll go this way this time so we can see the outside. And then, oh, where did that go? Can you, all right, let's try it right here. No, it doesn't want to go like that. Oh, my image is messing it up. Okay. 
<laughs> it doesn't like my recording window. I did not realize that. Okay, so we'll do that one. Come back here. And we'll go right there instead. with that and then same thing I'll hide the fill so I can actually see this process a little bit easier so again we'll go to path offset path and yeah I probably should have stuck with that instead negative six would have been better I will stay with negative seven just to keep this one consistent um, and then again same thing we'll cut this path Just want this selection point right here. Okay, and then so I am convinced that that is the same background. Uh, let's go to default, hide that gradient right there, and then we'll reselect this gradient with this top gray. Take that back and this bottom gray. Yeah, there is a gradient there. Okay, so um, let's see. So this one I'm going to apply a little bit differently. I've got this selected. I'm going to do the eyedropper tool. Then I'm going to hit G on the keyboard, which is going to give me this little bar right here. And I'm going to drag it top to bottom like that. And that's going to, you can see how that color changes right there. If I just do it right here, you can see it's darker and lighter. So I'm going to use this to actually apply that color gradient in the kind of angle and direction that I want. So I've got that there. And then um, quick little trick, I'm going to actually do object hide selection. And that's going to let me see this one right here. And then um, same process, I'm just going to reuse that box. And we'll sample that. And we'll sample oops, that. And then like that, apply that gradient, and then G again to, oh, where was that, yeah, that's about right, and then back up to the menu here, object, show all to bring that one back to the front here, um, and then do the last one real quick since I'm on a roll, um, 13 minutes too, not bad. Same process, I'm just applying these lines. Through here. And this one might be a little bit difficult, but it looks like swing and a hit. All right. Um, again, close enough for what we're doing right now. Cool. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to keep that gradient for now and we'll just come back and fix it later so um, I moved again I just did the shift X and I moved the fill to the stroke um, so I can just work with it directly there and then um, same process I'm gonna do path offset path same distance trying to keep things consistent um, oops hit minus instead too early all right We'll do minus now to get rid of all these extra points, and we'll clean up this last chunk here. Okay, so we got that. I'm happy with that. We will draw two rectangles again, and again, same process. We'll resample just to be safe. our outer and this is our 
here. Okay, and select by the gradient. Select by the gradient. All right, so a couple minutes in and I'd see that's pretty close. There's some tweaks I could do. Um, if I had to guess, I'm looking at this now, I'd say they actually did something with a circle. Yeah, I think they used a circle or something and offset it. Probably would have gotten cleaner lines if I did that. But anyway, all right, so, um, so that's kind of the process for doing this logo. There's a couple other things that you could do, so I'm gonna actually We'll copy this over here and kind of mess with this too. Um, and I can show you some other controls here. So for those of you who skipped ahead, welcome back. Um, all right, so other things that we can do is the um, one of my favorite tools in here is actually the Pathfinder. Um, and that's this little set of buttons right here. And what you can do is actually can you merge shapes. So if I select these two and then do this first one here, it's going to merge them into the same shape. If I do this selection right here, and do this one, I can actually subtract that area from it. And every time I do that, it's gonna create new geometry. So right now, this is actually kind of like a, oh, of course it's doing that. So there's like a hole that I just cut inside of that shape, okay? Again, all points and lines, mathematical curves and stuff, um, that's what we're working with here. Um, this other one here, we can do like the intersect. Um, that's kind of a boring one though. Let's try that. No, that just does the same thing. Yeah, so there's a couple different modifications you can make here. Um, other things you can do, like I can bring in a whole bunch of new shapes, um, and I can subtract these from the top area here, and come up with you know different weird shapes like that. Um, furthermore, I can come in and we have a whole set of um, effects just like we had in Photoshop. So um, one of the ones that I often end up doing is drop shadow. Um, and you can see here the effect of that rasterization. Um, the drop shadow has to be rasterized even, where is it? Stylized drop shadow. So you can see that the drop shadow itself is actually being rasterized even though we're working with a vector for the graphic, right? Um, the secret to good drop shadows you with lots of experience is the seller the better so sometimes going down to something like oh, my image um, very subtle people's eyes are really good at picking up a subtle drop shadow so never go too big you can kind of see that there's a drop shadow on that um, and it does make itself present but it's not overwhelming so you always go a little bit small with your drop shadows all right um, let's see. Oh, there was one other status fact. Okay, so here's my big bugaboo about Illustrator. Um, we've been talking about this whole time, kind of how, we'll put that over there. Um, you can take something small, and let's just do, actually, let's do this. So I'm going to put this on here, and so we've got this rec Oops. got this rectangle here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a stroke so I'm going to click on this little set of this three bar thing here if you don't have that in your menu bar you can find all these other options here so there's stroke right here and I'm going to turn this up so I've got kind of a thick stroke and I'm going to bump it on the inside um, so this is the one mistake that a bunch of people make that always gets points marked down so heed this warning all right you've got your super cool logo going on you've got that shape it's got something else going on like let's say you've got a weird circle in here and you pathfinderized this oh that would be such a good fish logo all right all right so you've got that going on okay so then you just designed it but you didn't realize that when you were working on it it was say super tiny all right so let's say it was that big and you can kind of already see what i'm going to get into here is the issue so you designed it at this size and it looks fantastic 
and then you go to put it on your business card and you realize that um, all right there's a business card size so uh, see it's still it's unfortunately still too big so let me shrink it even further okay so you worked on your logo you're you're ecstatic about it it looks fantastic great let's throw it on a business card so you take it over here move it up to the top and now it's on your business card and you're like wait that's way too small i wanted it bigger so you take your logo and you drag it up and now your lines are super thin okay that's something to avoid and it's a mistake that all beginners make and everyone gets marked down on this first project for so i don't want anyone to make this mistake okay so here's what you're going to do you're going to take your logo that you're super happy with and you're going to do edit or sorry you're going to do object and you're going to do that same path trace that i did with the offset path and you're going to change this value to something like that so you're at so in this case, it was one pixel um, because of the stroke here. Easy to match here. So I'm going to do negative one stroke, which will max, match the one uh, point or pixel stroke that I had um, for this object. Click OK. Now I'm going to go in, and I'm going to turn off the stroke for my outside. Remember, you have I just created this extra face right here. So I've got that outside, and then I've got this inside, and I'm going to I'm gonna move this out. I'll show you just what I'm doing here is I'm just basically going to turn that black and get rid of this. So I'm going to have these two shapes, but let me, let me do that on top of each other here. So we've got that, we've got that. Cool, yeah. So now I have this black area that's going to be that stroke offset, and then I have this bluish area that's going to be that interior fill. So now when I take this, Um, so now when I take this, I can actually scale it up, and it's going to keep that same um, sort of thickness difference between when it was small and when I came in here to throw it onto my business card. Top. All right, and let's just adjust that right there. Okay, so um, see, I wasn't going to try and find a <laughs> business name to fake, but we're going to go with this because I really like that. So my fishy all right so um text is kind of similar to illustrator or similar to photoshop and pretty much everything else these days um illustrator has two ways to place text all right let me actually go over that real quick so i can click once and it's going to create this line of text here and that line's going to go off forever and ever and ever okay it's only going to break down when i hit enter to break the line okay so you can do that as much as you want, but this line of text will continue off forever in a line. The other way to place text is to click and drag with the text tool. That's going to create a text block, a text box um, that will be wrapped into a certain area. Okay. Um, technically, there is a third way, which is you can actually create text on a path. Um, if you want to do this, this is more of a um, kind of an advanced thing. Um, so. You would go to type on a path tool, and then you would assign it here. Um, well, it's going to be a pain. Um, we won't bother with that. If you want to do text that follows a line like this, um, I think. I don't know why that was being specific. So um, this is a pain in a pain to place. Um, so if you do want to do something like text that follows a line like this, talk to me in class. I'm not going to go over it for this demo. Um, it's not necessarily something you uh, need to learn here. And then the other thing, and I'm probably going to get this wrong at least twice when I'm doing it, um, is text that fills an area so set that and then um, I believe it's this one there we go um, so you can have text fill an area like that and then it applies all the same rules that you would normally expect um, or 
it should anyway. So you can kind of modify the corners, um, make it do weird shapes like that. So you do have those options when you are placing text, which is why I think Illustrator makes a really good place to set up um, individual posters for a project where you would be able to create kind of wavy shapes like that. Um, let's, let's do my crazy bits here. Um, but then at the same time, also be able to create this text, have it fully adjustable on all the other bells and whistles. All right. Um, anyway, so same adjustments as you'd expect. You'd be able to change the character, uh, the font size, and all those other things. Um, so let's go back down here now to our business card um, that I was throwing together. And so we'll be my fishy. And we'll bump this font size up. And I'm going to use a different font. Um, try not to use the default font because I'm going to see it every single time. Um, don't use Comic Sans. Don't use Papyrus. Um, let's see. I like this one. All right. So this is kind of the last thing I want to show you guys is that you can also turn text into shapes that you can then edit yourself later. So I have this right here. <clears throat> As part of your project, when you export, when you finish your whole, um, when you finish your project for this week, the uh, milestone that you'll be doing, um, what I want you to do is make sure that your text is not editable. And what you'll do is you'll right click on it and oh, there it is. Okay, and do create outlines. And what that's going to do is it's going to turn your text into those same outlines as um, any other shape. So if I actually go into these now, um, ungroup that. So I can use now all the same tools as I could as if this was a. That's a stroke menu. That's why. I use it. Okay. Um, so I can do this, use all the same tools as I could on a normal shape because these are now normal shapes, right? And it'll do that with all kinds of crazy things um, and fonts and whatnot. Um, so like here's that blob of text right here and now it's editable, right? Why that's important is because you will go to export your project to someone else's computer who doesn't have that font. Their computer will try to load the font and then it comes up screwed up weird like this um, where it's actually been exported, but it, then it's all wrong and stuff. So, even though it's usually pretty good about that for exporting fonts, don't always trust it. Anytime you are exporting a finished graphic, make sure you create outlines with your text, okay? Um, so, I think I'm happy with where this has gotten. Um, so, you will be either, well, I will figure out exactly how I want you guys to design your logo um for your milestone for this week um and then and i'll set up maybe i'll have a couple files for you guys to choose from um, but i want you guys to re recreate a reasonably complex logo um, so i want you to use a different couple different tools um, and some other things to actually create that logo all right so i will be waiting in class for you guys to help you figure out how you want to do that logo um, or even if your logo is possible, if you come with your own. If you want to design one from scratch, that's great, but um, please run it by me. Well, don't design it from scratch because that's what your project's going to be. Um, so we'll get some images together, and I'll give you guys a couple options to choose from for a class. All right? Um, so see you guys in class.